about what's going on with energy in chemical reactions. Now, you will be watching or have watched a Tyler DeWitt video on the types of reactions. And so there's five types of reactions. And among those five types of reactions, you have energy um, being either absorbed through the chemical reaction or being released through the chemical reaction. And um, basically what happens is you have so much energy in your reactants, so the things that are reacting together, and then you end up with so much energy in the products after the reaction happens. And so sometimes the reactants energies can be lower than the product's energy, or sometimes the reactants energy can be higher than the product's energy. And so I want to talk about the the two different types of energy reactions there are. So you have what is called an endothermic reaction. So that's this first slide here. And in the endothermic reaction, that means energy is absorbed. And because energy is absorbed throughout the reaction, your reactants actually have less energy than the products. And what will actually happen is the surrounding temperature around those chemicals will actually decrease, so it might feel a little bit colder. And, um, and this means that there is there's energy being pulled into the reaction. So these, these reactants have a low energy, and then throughout the reaction, there's energy pulled into the reactants in, to make this reaction happen. And that energy is coming from the atmosphere or whatever is surrounding the chemicals. And typically that energy is in the form of some sort of heat in the air. And if these, these reactants, when they make this reaction, pulls energy from the air around it, it's pulling heat energy from around it. And then what happens is the products get not only the energy of the reactants, but also this heat energy that was was taken from the atmosphere that made the temperature decrease. And so then you have these products having a higher energy than the reactants. And you'll notice on this energy curve, you have a really high part of the energy right when the reaction is happening. And that'll, that's, that's typical where you have, you have this extra amount of energy to make the reaction happen. And then it goes back down and, and levels off for this energy of products. So that's the, what is called the endothermic reaction. The next reaction is what is called the exothermic reaction. And so what we have here is we have energy that's being released, which means the energy of the reactants is actually greater than the energy of the products. And then this also means that the surrounding temperature may increase. And so what happens here is the reactants have a bunch of energy stored. So these chemicals have a bunch of energy stored in them. And then when the reaction occurs, it's throughout the reaction that all this extra stored energy in these reactants has to go somewhere. And so some of it goes into the products. And so the products have a lower energy because not all of the reactant energy is going to the products. A lot of this reactant energy actually goes out in the atmosphere as heat. So if you can think of something like a combustion reaction where you have a fire from gas, that would be what is considered a combustion reaction where the gas has a lot of stored energy in, in, in its molecules and when the reaction occurs where it gets ignited and it reacts with oxygen in the air, the, um, the stored energy in these reactants goes mostly or at least a lot of to, um, to this heat energy and when that heat energy goes out in the atmosphere there's only so much energy left for products. And so, so that's what is happening with an exothermic reaction. So this last statement here, it says energy is a product. Well, so you have reactants with a lot of energy that are in the chemicals. And then what happens is you have this reaction where you have these products that are a low energy and then another product of this reaction is, is energy. Where if you go back one slide with the endothermic, the energy is a reactant, meaning the reactants have low energy, and to get the energy up for the products, you have to have energy from the atmosphere or heat, and so that becomes part of the reaction, and so that's the energy is considered a reactant there. All right, so I hope this was helpful, and um, 
take this video, watch it, and also watch the Tyler DeWitt video because I know you guys love him. And hopefully these two videos will help you with the assignment um, related to balancing types of reactions and energy of reactions. Thank you. Check you later.